everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be going over bubble glazing. So go ahead and grab a pot that you want to bubble glaze and I will show you how to do it. So I have a bisquare piece. Yours can be in the greenware stage or it can be in the bisquare stage. You are also going to want a underglaze or a glaze that you want to bubble glaze with. At the end of this video I will be going over the pros and cons of using glaze versus underglaze and also the pros and cons of using a bisquare piece versus a greenware piece. You will also need some sort of soap. This can be hand soap. I'm using a dish soap. Anything that makes bubbles really is fine. You're gonna want a straw, something to mix uh, the water and the glaze with, and a little cup. And you're just gonna want a little bit of water. I probably have about like, I'd say three, four ounces in here. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I have my piece already. I'm gonna grab my underglaze and we're just going to Pour a little bit of this in here. Now, the more you put in here, the more saturated the color is going to be. So if you want just kind of like a, I'm using like a light blue green. If I just want like a very light turquoise, I'm not gonna put as much. And if I want it to be, you know, really vibrant, I'll put a little bit more. And this will take experimentation with each color that you end up using. They're all gonna end up a little different. So now that I have that in there, I think that's good. And we'll take a little bit of soap. mix that in there so you can see I have this as like a milk like texture so you really don't want this to be too thick and you don't want this to be too thin and as you kind of start blowing into the straw you'll kind of notice you know is it bubbling is it not and you can kind of adjust accordingly we're gonna take our straw I'm probably gonna start on the inside and then move to the outside just because it's gonna be easier to flip this over from the outside once there's bubbles in the middle so let's go ahead and just start blowing you're gonna want to let this overflow into it if you want it in the inside You can kind of move your glass around to get that all in there. Mine spilled a little bit, so the bottom's gonna be a little bit more blue, but that's okay. And sometimes it can be nice too to take your like spoon here just kind of grab some bubbles and just stick them onto places that need them. So I have my own inside glaze here and I'm just gonna flip it over. It's a little bit, it'll probably dribble out here. Let's just dump. We'll flip. Kind of take what's left on the outside here and dribble this around. Now you kind of want to let this dry for a little bit, and once this kind of looks like it's starting to set a little bit more, you can kind of blow away some of the bubbles, or start popping some of them. It'll leave the color right in the spot here. Now, if you end up with some spots, kind of like how I have here where it just doesn't look great, feel free to just go ahead and I have a little like wet rag here. We'll grab where it feels the most secure. I can just kind of wipe some of this away. And that is one of the perks of doing this on a bisquared piece is I can wipe this away without worrying about, you know, like cracking my piece and ending up ruining it or, you know, taking off some surface that you, you know, didn't want to. So we'll flip this back over, put that back down. We'll do it again. And this time I'll come at it from a side angle, make it a little better of a contact point here. Oh. 
Another fun thing that you can do with this too is you can layer colors. So if I want to go over this with say like an orange or something like that and really just kind of get different layers, that's also a thing that is an option. So we'll go ahead and kind of let that dry for a bit. All right, everyone, so here we have our bowl. So I do want to go over the pros and cons of using underglaze versus glaze in this process. So the first thing with underglaze is you can, you know, bubble glaze the bottom and you don't have to wipe it off because it's not going to stick to the kiln shelf because there's no glass former in it. So that is nice. It'll kind of keep a cohesive look for your entire piece, which is always a good thing. And another thing that you want to think about is the fact that underglaze really doesn't move, which is really great in this process because you get this really awesome pattern and it's going to stay like that, especially if you just put like a clear coat over it. It's going to look just like this with the base color of the clay. If you end up using a glaze on this, you can't do the bottom and you do kind of have to worry about, you know, this kind of muddling when it fires because the glaze will melt and it will move rather than solidify like the underglaze will. So if you end up doing glaze, you do want to think about how you want this to come out. So you can either do exactly like what we just did with a glaze and then you can put a clear coat over it or you can end up going over it with some sort of color and then doing your glaze on top of it because you don't have to worry about covering it with something else like we would with underglaze. So you do kind of want to think about that. It'll come out with a different pattern than what goes on here because it will end up moving. I do suggest that if you're going to do this with glaze that you do this with uh, Mako stroking coats. Those tend to be the most stable from what I've experienced. And if you do them at low fire, they're gonna look pretty close to how it looks now. Whereas the higher you get up in temperature, the more that that's gonna melt and move and make some sort of different pattern. It will still look cool, but it just won't be exactly this. If you end up doing this with a greenware piece rather than a bisqueware piece, you do risk when you add any sort of moisture, like the bubbles in the water and all this, that you can cause your piece to crack. So I do suggest that if you're gonna do this in the greenware stage, that you do this in the leather hard stage rather than the bone dry, because when it's in bone dry, it's gonna be a lot more susceptible to cracking when you add more water to it. So I do suggest doing this in the leather hard stage so that way you don't end up worrying about this, but you do also risk that if you mess this up, like how I had that little dribble earlier and I was able to wipe that down, you really kind of want to be careful on that because you might end up moving some clay or, you know, end up getting rid of some sort of surface that you really liked or, you know, possibly ruining that spot. So a lot less that you can do with just the glaze and a lot more that you have to worry about the structure itself. That is something to think about, but you know, if you do this with underglaze and on a greenware piece, you can fire it and then afterwards, you don't have to worry about if you ruin the glaze job, you can wipe it off and the underglaze bubble design will still be exactly where you put it. You don't wanna do glaze on top of a greenware piece though, just because it's gonna be really hard to get another layer of glaze to stick to your pot just because there's already glaze on it and it's gonna end up being solidified. You also wanna make sure that all your temperatures line up. So if you choose to do this in the greenware stage, I highly suggest you stick with underglaze. One more thing I do wanna mention about doing this on a bisqueware piece is I do highly suggest using a dip glaze to finish it off and seal it rather than a paint on glaze because a paint on glaze, sometimes we can get a little bit aggressive with our brush and because we are adding moisture to our pot, we can end up moving this pattern around and kind of muddling it a little bit. Whereas a dip glaze is a quick, easy, minimal contact onto our pattern and therefore we are not going to mess it up. So that is all for this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and I will see you all next week. Thanks for watching.